alhamdulillah that everything is based on our non-existence and surrendering the only thing that Allah gave to you was not the cash but your will. Surrendering your will back to Allah is the goal of our existence. The crown of creation of what you have given Ya Rabbi, I surrender my will, I'm coming back as nothing. InshaAllah page 110 and read the English that we tried to give just a little drop of the understanding of what awliyaullah want us to understand from our non-existence that we have an illusionary understanding that we are a drop in an ocean of rahmah. That ocean is called Muhammadun Rasulullah it's not La ilaha illallah because that would be shariq. So in that drop of that ocean shaitan came to us and said, you're big, you're huge, you're great and we believed. And our whole problem from childhood is that we believe that and he inflated us and he inflated us and he's not stopping inflating us. And this turuqs that Allah give is a ni'mah to come with a little pin and to deflate us. Not insult us, they deflate us. That be truthful to yourself, that your worshipness, you worship yourself, you worship your desires, your inability to control your anger, shaitan is your worshipness. Your inability to control your tongue, shaitan is your Lord, not Allah Anyone who's angry, Satan is his Lord. Anyone who can't control their anger entered into kufr, means that shaitan came into them and now is operating that insan. Everybody fighting for you, for your being. Most of us filled with devils. Because we don't know how to protect the body, we don't know how to protect our reality. These devils merely come into this simple form. When shaitan saw this creation of Bani Adam salam, he clicked the clay and went through the rear and into the being and came out the head and said, this, ooh, I'm going to assault this from every direction because he's subtle, he's like a wind, he go in and out of anything. So as he comes with a wind he can take over and protect and possess an individual. So the turuqs are a ni'mat and a blessing from Allah Don't let him to become Lord of your being in which he speaks through your mouth and that he hears through your ears and that he sees through your eyes. And then you think you're with Allah And then you think that you have a love for Ahlul Bayt and Sayyidina Muhammad It, all the same being everyone's fighting for. So then Allah gave us Hadith Al-Qudsi that when you do your mandatory obligations and you begin to come with voluntary worship to My Divine the Presence, means you did what I required. You did it because Allah ordered it but you come with voluntary worship, you drive a little bit farther you take a little bit time, some people waking up 3 o'clock in the morning UK time to hear a zikr, that's voluntary worship. You did what Allah mandated, you come with voluntary worship. If Allah grant that same servant sincerity, so there's a skeleton of clay but there's a energy being inside that clay, is shaitan using you or is Rahman using you? Everyone go back and answer their own question. You don't need a shaykh to only verify because they don't believe when the shaykh verifies. When they see that you're sick and they see that your, your faculties are not being used by Allah, you're not being a servant of Allah you're servant of shaitan. When he uses your hearing because those are the exact same faculties Allah will give to you, says, I will be the hearing in which you hear. 
So who gave their hearing to Allah? But they can't control what they hear. So they begin to hear every type of gossiping, every type of bad sound, bad music, bad everything. And as a result they start to hear waswas. What? Who? He did? No way. What? Imaginary. They don't even take real events, they take imaginary signals. So then who took your ear? Allah. So there's this one clay being everyone's fighting for. That Hadith al-Qudsi is the coordinates for you to understand is Allah using you or shaitan is using you. Allah says, I'll be the hearing in which you hear. But you must have ha reached a very high level of khushiyah, sincerity, your character that they beat you, you're down, they attack you, you stay quiet. You, every type of difficulty come to you and you're still of a very beautific and fragrant nature. Your wujud and your existence doesn't change for how could Allah be your hearing when you, you have a satanic character. So then the hearing, you're listening to waswas, that's no longer for Allah Allah trained those servants absolutely don't put an ear for shaitan. So then who do they hear is Rahman and that's how they teach you without a book. They don't open a book for you and read for you the novels of awliya past but through their ear they're sold from who's their school? They didn't go to Al Azhar to learn fiqr and to learn anything. Why? Because those people would have contaminated their heart. The one you learn from, you learn all of their belief if they're not awliya. So when Allah don't want you to have, so He gave in Surah Al Kahf, what? I sent Nabi Musa who speaks to me where I could teach him. I sent him to one whom attained a rahmah. And then what? We taught him alam al uh, ilma laduni wa hikmat bi salihin. That we taught him knowledges of the heaven because that servant attained a rahmah. So that means Allah is describing their hearing. They have had so much control on understanding, they know when a devil is whispering to them. And the smell of it and the fragrance of, of that energy they don't even allow it to come close. So how is a devil whispering into your ears, you're not doing the awrad, you're not keeping the wudu, you're not keeping the practices, you're not doing the meditation, you're not fortifying your energy to push away that he could come so close to your ear that he is now just speaking to you. So you didn't reach that hadith and you didn't reach where Allah described, I'm your hearing. So like the good and the bad, the good they fought all their life with every type of testing that come to them, every type of difficulty that came to them. And the waswats they never stop, go, go and, and reveal this difficulty, say about this, talk about this, talk about that. And they're, they understand when shaitan is playing with them. As a result Allah opened their hearing and they hear the inspiration that comes to their soul. And they're being dressed by Allah's rahmah. Then I become the eyes in which you see. And as a result, they train their eyes to look down, they train their eyes from bad desires, and they train their eye to look upon their heart. And as a result, they're continuously vigilant over their heart. And what's happening with the heart, the palpitation of their heart. What aggravates them and what pleases them as a result of being vigilant on their heart, their heart is giving continuous signals like radar. They understand when somebody has a bad energy because the heart is telling woo, 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 and picking up the signal of the bad intention of the person. The bad intention from just the typing when they type because everything is an energy and this you know now by all intelligence offices they have every type of energy signature. They have electronic signatures for everything you send. They know where it was sent, by what server it was sent, by what computer it was sent. You think Allah doesn't know? 
what you were thinking when you sent it, what energy you put into it and you kissed it and sent it off. Of course they know. It comes like a loaded bomb into somebody's email with all of its energies into the person's heart. So then that hadith was describing then, I become the eyes in which you see. When Allah is going to occupy their eyes, it teaches them, don't look at this, don't look at that, but be vigilant over your heart and I show you my heavens. And as a result they see, their Ahlul Basira, they see the heavens, they see the light. I become the breath in which you breathe, so they don't breathe other than by a qudra and an energy that sustains them. I become then the hands in which you touch. Means that their hands are not of a satanic nature in which shaitan took their hands and make them to do and type and, and every type of horrific thing. So when you see somebody typing bad and writing bad against the shaykh and, and putting out bad, shaitan has overtaken that servant's ears, their eyes definitely, we don't know what they're looking at and now is taking over their hands because they're typing things that are not from Rahman. So they claim they may be pious, why they type like that? Why they type against Muhammadiyoon? Why they type against the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad And to come against an amir, to come against somebody who's alim and teaching, to come against somebody who represents and is the family of Sayyidina Muhammad by actions and by deeds, not by going around and claiming you're something and someone. Satan has taken their hands. So it doesn't take Einstein to understand when you're seeing somebody typing bad, Ya Latif, shaitan has taken over this person's hands. They're now typing weird articles, weird comments. So everybody's same. But then when you see the other one whom Allah says, I be your hands, Subhana ladi bi yadihi mulk. Allah says, when I take over your hands, glory be to me that my dominion is on me. Allah knows His dominion. He knows what power he has put into the hands of that servant. Tabarak alladhi bi yadihi mulk, Surat al-Mulk, Tabarak. That their hand has immense tabarak, Allah praising Himself. Not that person anyone but the person vanished and my power emanating through them. That person vanished and my hearing is emanating through them. That person vanished and my seeing is emanating through them. And that's why there's hadith that, be careful for the vision of the believer for he looks with the firasul of Allah His firasul, his spiritual vision is with the light of Allah that hit your body, go into your soul, go into the depth of your intention with their firasul. And to each different, there may be bigger awliya say, oh that's nothing, we can do more. And we're nobody, we're not awliya, we're teaching you from realities of what this donkey knows, of what these realities of being in Allah's way. Then Allah I'll be the feet in which you walk, that your qadam and your path will be siratul mustaqim. What we said here, the awliya before their gate of Fatiha. اِهْتِنَا سِرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الدَّعْلِينَ Because Allah dressed them with grace, they find those who angered Allah and those who went astray and those are His murids. As a result He brings them all to سِرَاطَ mustaqim. Why? Because they are muqaddam and they are the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad So imagine you write against them and say, oh they are not muqaddam, you're coming against Sayyidina Muhammad's feet, his path, his turuq. That's why Allah said that when you come against my awliya, you're going to declare war against Allah There's no sin that you do in Qur'an that Allah declares war on a servant except to come against his awliya. Why? Because you're coming against what Allah just described. 
you're coming against my hearing, you're coming against my seeing, you're coming against my breathing, you're coming against my hands, you're coming against my feet, you're coming against my Rabbaniyoon. And as a result I'm going to defend them and I'm going to declare war on that servant where heaven and earth begin to attack that servant. And there's no shelter from any difficulty coming upon that servant. There's no tree to run under to hide yourself. There's no one else who can take your case to protect yourself, nothing except the one whom you damaged and whom Allah declare war against you, you're in difficulty until that is resolved. That immensity of that reality is teaching what shaitan is after. So when we see the shaitan has taken the ears of someone, he's waswasing. He took the eyes of them, they're no longer vigilant of their heart, they're more interested in what they want to buy and to go shopping or what's happening in the material world. They're no longer conscious of what they say and what they speak and what they write and they are possessed. And they are not servants of Allah they are the servants of shayateen. And we describe right now the battle has opened, the dajjal is moving upon the earth and shayateen are everywhere. Those whom they live their life by feeling and the subtlety of their heart, they see the energies, the battles and the demons that are flowing and now you turn the TV and you can see it too. The home that represents the freedom of the world is under siege. There are armies and buildings, 10,000 in a city, 20,000 in another city. This is the land of the free and the what? Home of the brave and the land of the free. They're pretty scared now, the devils have come. So we see it, Allah gives us an eye to see, do you see how everything's under attack? So who do you represent? You think you're really worshipping Allah but your hands and your mouth and every other faculty of you is, is working for shaitan? That's why the turuqs come to teach all these haqqaiqs that be… be truthful to yourself and realize, I am verily but an oppressor to myself, Ya Rabbi, protect me because my physicality is of no importance but my soul I'm trying to save. So the one whom Allah dresses from that reality, He's talking about their soul. They negated their physicality and their soul is hearing with Allah's power, their eyes are seeing with Allah's power, they're breathing with Allah's power. Their hands and their qudra and Allah's kingdom and mulk flows into their hands with that power and their qadam and feet move where Allah wants them to move. No matter how difficult their move and whatever the fire and obstacles that face them, Allah's with them. Even if it into their own destruction they don't care. So as a result their entire wujud is what? is in the Muhammadan reality. That's what we tried to describe last night and that's the Hadith Al-Qudsi. Give your ears to Allah give your eyes to Allah give your breath to Allah give your hands to Allah give your feet to Allah in which you negated yourself, negated yourself, negated yourself until the light of Sayyidina Muhammad begins to enter into you. إِذَا جَاءَ النَّصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَاتِ وَرَعَيْتَ النَّاسِ وَيُدْخَلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا إِنَّ فَتَانَكَ فَتَنْ مُبِينًا All of these verses of Holy Qur'an is describing Allah's victory is not for your body, Allah's not thinking of your body, Allah's not caring for the body. Allah is saying, that body is causing you a lot of grief because you're giving it so much important. 
When you come and understand your fight is not to beat pe people, not to curse people, not to be angry at people, not to be screaming at people, you should be beating yourself. You're angry at someone? Start texting yourself that you are the most obnoxious and ignorant person on earth and text yourself, keep texting yourself. You have to text somebody, text yourself. You're just a real moron, you're a moron, you're horrible, you're obnoxious. All the things that people want to say to other people, you have no right. Allah will ask you, did you say it first to yourself? You, you, yourself is making big problems on this earth, you're an oppressor. Fight yourself, fight yourself. So the biggest jihad was against myself, my bad character. When I fought that fight, when I fought that fight, then Allah grant you a najat that you came against yourself, you came against your bad character, you came against everything so that you're not like that a fire. And as a result of coming against yourself, you push shaitan away from you. And so that now you can hear the heavenly kingdom, you can see the heavenly kingdom, you can feel the heavenly kingdom. And that you feel that Allah is with you, Sayyidina Muhammad is with you, that malaika come to inspire and to teach you because you're heavenly. When you're narani and fiery you know there's no angel coming and teaching someone like that. There's no presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to be with someone like that. If the angels are not there and Sayyidina Muhammad is not there, do you think Prophet is inspiring people to write bad articles against shaykhs, to text horrible things against a shaykh, to fight and, and, and have all sorts of craziness against a shaykh? No. So they know Sayyidina Muhammad is not with them, shaitan is with them. They're now of the possessed. See whether Allah's rahmah on that person to relieve them of their possession and to regain their mind and their status. So then the safety and difficulty was to take this way of annihilation, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Grant me the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, Ya Habib Al Azim that bring your light into my being. So that when I'm in the jamaah of the shaykhs and awliya that they're my shaykh, that my shaykh is always my imam. When I'm praying at home my shaykh is always my imam. Whether I'm acting as the imam my shaykh is always in front of me praying, he's the imam of my salah. Then the crazy people say, oh, are you worshipping and why? When you go to the masjid are you worshipping the guy in the front? When the imam is in the front and he goes, Allahu Akbar. Is that a shirk because you're now bowing when he bowed? <laughs> Everyone's doing a salah. But Allah is saying, if, if you have the belief of malakut, don't ever leave that understanding. Your shaykh is always with you. And anyone who doesn't have a shaykh, then Prophet is with you. See yourself at Kaaba Sharif and Ya Rabbi, I met the holy Kaaba, let the light of that reality to dress me. Let the light of Medina to Munawwara to dress me that I'm always at your feet, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, you are my Imam, always. And that fill my heart with that light and Allah make it easier, find these shuyukh who are ahbab and they have an immense love and as a result keep training on send your light into my heart. I'm in need, I'm, I'm deficient, send a light into my heart that Allah make a light to come into the heart of the servant. And then when you're praying, Ya Allahu Akbar, it's the same salah, it's all praying to Allah But you're visualizing your shaykh is in front of you and that always you're praying behind the shaykh. That don't let me to ever be outside of their coordinates Ya Rabbi. That I'm always with the Imam and Allah described, will even raise you on the day of judgment with your Imam. So that you don't answer, we'll ask your imam, what were you teaching them? Is that important for Allah So then Allah doesn't care for dunya, He cares for the world of light. So then always keep yourself with the imam, he's always in front of me. Then the tarbiyah of meditation and tafakkur was 
let the light of the shaykh enter into your heart. Didn't Allah describe and didn't we describe in Safar that any verse of Holy Qur'an in reference to the Kaaba is about your heart. Allah said, take that house of mine and wash it, destroy the idols of it, purify it and circumambulate around it. How do you wash your heart? How do you destroy the idols of your heart? With your zikr, with your salawat and ask the light of the shaykhs to come. When Allah having taqwa, keep the company of sadiqeen. When you're making salah, you say, As salamu alaykum, ayyuhan nabi, wa salamu alaykum, ibadullahi salihin. They're facing you. Allah's teaching you don't see them because you are blind in dunya. But Prophet is looking right at you, and all his salihin are right there behind. You can't even imagine where your prayer is right now when you pray. That Allah is giving you to give salams to Prophet Ibadullahi salihin wa kunu ma sadiqeen, keep their company. So then the people of Malakut their whole life is, Ya Rabbi I don't want with the physical body, keep me always with their light. Ya Ibadullahi salihin, please always stay with me, I'm a weak servant, don't go now, don't leave after my salah. Be always with me, send your light into my heart. Send this nazar and, and the power that Allah gave to you of this light, put it into my heart, come into my Kaaba and begin to destroy all the idols. As you fought for Sayyidina Muhammad side by side with Sayyidina Muhammad I'm asking you from Ummat of Muhammad a weak servant, come into my heart and fight. Come into my heart and destroy every idol and every bad character and every bad desire. You don't think their lights are all around you and that their light can't enter into your wujud? You can't be so material that you think, oh this is not possible. When we gather here today our soul is everywhere. The size of the soul can't be imagined. When our little bodies came into this room and into this house, the souls are immense in size. The lights are already oversecting and, and, and diffusing into each other, grafting and overlapping each other to such an extent that all the rules of salah. When Allah said, don't pray in Surat Al-Munafiqeen in the masjid who was built as a fitna against Sayyidina Muhammad because they built a mosque in time of Prophet to come against Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah said, don't pray there. Don't pray where they come against Prophet ﷺ's love, why? Because there's an energy. When you go into the masjid the imam has an energy, he's taking the jama'ah where he, where he believes. If you pray enough in a dark mosque you will become dark. Their energy, their belief will dress the servants and you see the people become dark and dark face, no light in their hearts. Their belief, their aqeedah and their talking is all dark. How? From the one who was taking the jama'ah in that. So there was an immense importance, his light is dressing everyone taking them. Then imagine you go to where the pious are, their lights like sunshine, you can't see how powerful their light is. You merely enter into the presence of that light and that light is washing away every type of badness. Dressing the servant, blessing the servant, as soon as they say, Allahu Akbar, all the souls are on a mirage with that servant. The immensity of light can't even be understood. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, wa salaam na mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammadin Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.